Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how and why I use a MacBook Pro as a university student studying computer science and economics. I get a lot of questions from friends and family asking why I decided to go with an Apple laptop for college. So we'll be breaking that down in this video. Timestamps and other information in the description below, let's go. So my first point is that, at least for me, in university, I haven't been given a lot of assignments that require a specific operating system or really deal with a specific operating system. This means that most of my assignments for most of my classes are all web-based. Whether it's Canvas or Blackboard, it's all done in your browser, not on a specific laptop or operating system. Because of this, there's no delineation between Mac or Windows, any web browser would work fine. For my computer science classes, all my programs were written in Eclipse, which is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, which is supported for both Mac and Windows, so there was no issue there. Eclipse is a software that lets you program in Java. Even with the assignments that dealt with the specific file structure or the command prompt, it's both supported on Mac and Windows, so there were absolutely no issues there. I actually prefer the Mac file system and terminal versus Windows files and command prompt, so there's that also. My second point is that, at least in my experience and opinion, OS X, which is MacBook's operating system, is so much more fluid and direct and easy to use than Windows. And I know that this seems somewhat circumstantial because it is, but all I know is that as soon as you open that MacBook, you are getting a streamlined premium experience that you simply don't get with Windows. As soon as you open that MacBook, you totally own that computer. Apple will never sell your information to third-party companies. However, Windows will take your data and use it to curate advertisements in the operating system itself. So if you open up settings or different applications, you will literally see ads in there. And that is something that I do not support. Apple is absolutely the king of privacy. Also, whenever I've used Windows in the past, it's always loaded with random bloatware and applications that no one wants. It's just such a nice experience to open a MacBook Pro have it totally clean, totally useful without having to go through and uninstall a hundred different applications. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for that premium experience that Windows simply cannot match. With MacBooks, there's definitely less friction between tasks. And if there is less friction between starting different things, you're so much more likely to do them. So let's say you open up your trusty old Windows laptop and you see that blue screen of updates. Well, now you're gonna pull out your phone and three hours have already passed while you're scrolling through Instagram. That's an extreme example, but all I know is that in almost every scenario, Apple just seems faster. Another great advantage that Apple has is the Apple ecosystem. So if you already have an iPhone or an iPad, it's a no brainer to get a MacBook. They all work so well together. All of those devices have iMessage on them. They all have FaceTime on them. You can airdrop files between your phone, iPad and MacBook. I'm a much faster typer on my keyboard than on my phone. So all that extra time while texting on my laptop rather than my phone really adds up. Another huge advantage that Apple has is iCloud. iCloud works so well between the MacBook Pro, the iPhone, and the iPad. Literally, I can save any textbook or document on my laptop and within seconds it appears on my iPad in the Files app. It's so automatic and seamless because the Files app by default is just so fluid. It's unmatched in any third-party software like OneDrive or Google Drive. Yes, there are ways to somewhat set this up on Windows laptops and Android phones, but when you get an Apple product, it's right there out of the box and it's the best experience you will ever have. Many other apps such as Drafts and the default photo app sync up perfectly between all your devices, which just makes for an amazing experience. Now let's talk about pricing. Pricing is probably the greatest limiting factor when it comes to buying a laptop for college. Let's face it, MacBooks are a lot more expensive than Windows computers. So honestly, if you're on a tight budget, you should probably go for a Windows laptop. However, there are a couple perks if you're a student buying an Apple computer. Apple usually has a student discount or sale running all the time for students. And sometimes you can even get a free pair of Beats headphones with your Apple laptop purchase. Apple products also have a really good resale value. So if you use it for a couple of years and then you wanna return it on the market, you'll get a lot of that value back, which you will not get with Windows computers. But for this video, I'm mainly talking to the people who have the budget for a MacBook and are deciding between other high-end Windows or MacBook computers. Some other concerns that I hear from other people when they talk about MacBooks is the keyboard and the port selection. I'm not gonna lie, the lack of ports on the MacBook can be kind of annoying, but as soon as I picked up my laptop, I got one of these USB-C hubs that has every port you're ever gonna need on here, and it's not that expensive. Usually they're like 15 to 30 bucks to get a pretty cheap one. With a keyboard, I usually use an external keyboard because I have my MacBook docked with my monitors over here. 
So I get a mechanical keyboard experience. To be honest, I really don't like the light butterfly feel of the MacBook Pro, but in my experience, you will get used to it and you will not care after like a week of use. If I threw this big heavy mechanical keyboard away, yeah, I would feel a little bit odd using the butterfly keyboard, especially because the travel is so light. But honestly, I would get used to it after like a week of use and the advantages that Apple provides far outweigh the negatives. Anyway, the new MacBooks that recently came out this year fixed this issue. They have more key travel, which makes for a better experience. In conclusion, the difference between Apple laptops and Windows laptops is a very difficult thing to quantitatively analyze. And it's something that you can really only understand if you use an Apple computer for an extended period of time, which seems counterintuitive, but trust me, it's that seamless integrated experience that you get the minute you open up that MacBook, which makes for a far better experience than any Windows laptop I could ever use. People will always tell you that, oh, you can't do this on a MacBook, you can only do it on Windows. But I think that's a piece of outdated advice. Nowadays in the present, almost every piece of software that you will use as a student is supported on both. I have never had a compatibility issue with my Mac in this area. Worst case scenario, you can literally install Windows on your MacBook and use it for certain applications, but I've never had to do that. Plus, you cannot actually install Mac on Windows, legally at least, so that's a huge bonus for Mac. You'll always have the Android bros who are like, you can get so many more specs for the price of Windows computers, Snapdragon this, Snapdragon that. But in my experience, you are paying for that premium feel and experience. And fine, if you have an Android phone, go with a Windows laptop. But if you have an iPhone and you have the budget and you're just deciding between a high-end Windows or a MacBook, I would say go with a MacBook. You can get the Air or Pro based on your budget. It's the same operating system. Yeah, so those are the reasons that I use a MacBook Pro in college for the computer science major. That's all for this debate. But before you guys go, I'd like to ask you to check out Manazer.org, our family website. Manazer.org is where you can read our weekly blog posts that come out every Tuesday and any book reviews that I do. I try to write a book review for every single book that I read so you can see them all there in Manazer.org slash book. You can also sign up for Thoughtful Thursday, our weekly email newsletter. Every Thursday you'll get a fun email which has a unique thought or idea that we've discovered that week. You'll also get updates on our content and what we're working on at the moment, along with a couple of our favorite things that week, like books, podcasts, TV shows, anything counts. So make sure to head over to manazer.org and sign up for Thoughtful Thursday. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll catch you guys later.